This program is made possible thanks to the generous support from the Ohio Farm Bureau members. For nearly 100 years, Ohio Farm Bureau has been bringing people together. Join us in the journey. Together. Together. Together with farmers. With the rising popularity of craft brewing, it's easy to forget about the heritage of our past. In Dayton, Ohio, Carillon Brewing Company is out to change that, serving history by the pint. The history of Dayton Brewing really starts at the very beginning. Dayton was established in, in 1796, people start moving in, and, and by 1799, we have a record of Georgia Newcomb at Newcomb Tavern Brewing. But it would have been done by the housewives in, in every household. The process of brewing and the boil made it safe to drink, and it was fortified, it, it was nutritious. It was based really around your health. You couldn't trust the water. We noticed as we were doing the research that there were 24 breweries, distilleries, there was a winery here in the region, and it was a large part of the industrial history of the region. Carillon Park is a 65-acre open-air museum here in, in Dayton, Ohio. It is the place to visit, to understand the growth of the Dayton region. So we came up with this concept of brewing in front of the public using as close as we could the tools and techniques and ingredients that they would have had in the mid-19th century. And we're the only museum in the United States with a fully operational licensed brewery. And it's been well received by all of our guests and the community. We have an entire archival collection of old directories from the businesses that would have been associated with breweries, from the actual breweries themselves to the cooperages. We can go back and see recipes from the breweries that existed in Dayton in the 1850s. Once we found that information, we really needed to put it all into practice. Squash beer is the type of beer that we chose from the historic record, not an exact recipe, but from a concept that was derived from a time in the year when you had used up all of your stored grain. Squash ale comes into play in the end of winter when you've run through your barley, your wheat, or your rye, your primary sugar content for beer. If you don't have those ingredients on hand, you're scrounging around for something else that's gonna be able to supplement those sugars that you would normally get from the grain. So starchy vegetables come to mind. When you didn't have enough grain on hand, you're adding a certain amount of butternut squash to supplement the sugar. One of our brewery customers, the Carillon Brewery, brews a squash beer. They asked us to grow squash for them. It's opened the door for us to grow a variety of, of other crops that breweries can use, and we're excited about that. When it came up that Jamie was interested in growing butternut squash for the brewery, it was a perfect fit. Anytime we can get the ingredients locally, we do. We're doing everything by hand. We have a gravity-fed system. We actually have three different kettles that we use for the brewing process. We have a hot water kettle. That's our largest one. It's an open 100-gallon copper kettle. So we need to fill nearly full at least twice during the brewing process. That one's directly heated with the charcoal and the hardwood. And then we have our mash tun, which is a separate copper kettle that's about 75 gallons. We add the butternut squash rain and the hot water from the 100-gallon copper kettle. We'll take our milled grain, haul it up with our pulley system, up to our mash tun, which is where we're gonna add the grain to the hot water, and stir it around, make almost like a porridge or a tea out of those grains. So it's kind of like a big thermos. So we're gonna maintain a specific mashing temperature with that hot water mixed with the grain and essentially generate a sugary liquid that we call wort. The third kettle is a boil kettle. So that's a kettle that's designed specifically to bring up to a very high temperature and boil for an extended period of time. That one's also 75 gallon. So the boil is important to sanitize uh, the beer, um, but it also gives us an opportunity to add additional flavor to the liquid. And then we're gonna be able to add anything like hops to the beer. So we add that during the boil. We can add anything else like beets or squash to the beer. And what we're gonna do is actually hand transfer one gallon at a time that near boiling liquid from the boil kettle into a collection basin that's attached to about 250 feet of copper tubing. 
It goes from near boiling, once it's done traveling through the coil, into a barrel at about 70 degrees, which is ideal for that yeast to start consuming the sugar and turning it into alcohol and carbon dioxide. From the beginning of a brew day to what we would technically call beer is about a seven day process. Um, and then we'll age it for anywhere from a few days up to two or three weeks, up to a month, um, depending on the style and the desired flavor that we want to get out of the final product. Our final product is about 55 gallons of usable liquid. So we lose liquid to evaporation during the heating. We lose it to the grain after it soaks up a lot of that sugar. Lots of materials go into the product and we don't get a ton of finished product at the end of it. They make about 55 gallons worth of drinkable beer. We ended up putting in anywhere between 20 and 25 pounds of butternut squash. We also have a bunch of different seasonals. We brew a ginger pale ale. It's a pale ale style beer that is flavored with fresh ginger root. We do a rye pale ale, a beer that features rye grain rather than barley. We do a Berliner Weiss style beer, which is a German wheat beer that was known historically for its tart, refreshing sourness. It's pretty cool to be able to say you're one of a handful of people that know how to make beer like they did in the 1850s and actually be able to serve what you're producing to the public is a pretty cool thing. And having the opportunity to teach people while you're doing that is the icing on the cake to me. When you kind of see that light bulb go off above a customer's head, you know, when you see that light in their eye, when they finally get beer brewing, our goal here is to be as educational as possible. So to have a lot of local connections with what's being grown locally brings about that, that authenticity. This project has really helped Carol on because of the diversity of people that are visiting. We've opened to a whole different segment of the community that might not be interested in aviation history or printing history or transportation history, but might very well be interested in historic foodways and beer. We're the city of a thousand factories and held more patents per capita than any other city in the country. And so uh, Dayton, Ohio has a, a massive story to tell. And those stories are of local entrepreneurs that changed the world. If you love Our Ohio Television, then you'll enjoy being an Our Ohio supporter. For just $25, you can enjoy Our Ohio Magazine, support Ohio food and farms, and stay connected to what's happening in your community. Visit supportourohio.org.